All right. Um, next up, uh, we're going to welcome to the stage uh, Jean-Noël Moyne, who uh, is going to talk to us about Nats and Kafka. I mean, we get these questions a lot, and uh, Jean-Noël has a ton of uh, really great insights to share here. So welcome to the stage, Jean-Noël. Hi, thank you, Jeremy. Um, right, so this is, uh, as you've probably heard, lots of mentions of uh, streaming and just stream uh, so far today. Part of the uh, session where we address the uh, human-sized cockroach in the room, i.e. Kafka. And this uh, will try to compare a little bit briefly, uh, because it's a very vast subject, obviously, um, you know, and contrast between Nats and Kafka. So the thing to understand um, is there's a very fundamental design difference between the two. Um, Kafka is a distributed append-only commit log, meaning that um, it can store and replay uh, messages logs, right? And then uh, you have other uh, you know, components such as Kafka streams, for example, uh, that lets you do things such as stream processing uh, and is built on top of the base Kafka. Uh, compare that to uh, Nats and Jetstream, which is a distributed messaging platform with added persistent storage. That's the part that uh, Jetstream does. So you have the core Nats, which does a fully fledged uh, distributed messaging system using subject-based addressing, uh, doing lots of things. And I'll mention that quickly as we go, uh, such as request reply, queuing, proper prep sub with wildcard subscribing, very fast, lots of deployment uh, architectures possible and so on. And then on top of this, uh, you get Jetstream. What Jetstream is really at, uh, at its base, it's a distributed persistence layer that's built on top of core NAS. Uh, from these fundamental design differences um, come a certain number of uh, fundamental functional differences here, right? Uh, Kafka is an append-only write-read log, right? So it's a log, right? It's you do not technically delete messages uh, from a Kafka log. You can just have compaction of a log. Uh, and you, some, some smartness in the compaction, but essentially you can only essentially add messages to a log and not delete them anywhere inside the log. Uh, compare that to Jetstream, which is actually an immediately consistent messaging store. What I mean by store versus log is the fact that you can delete individual messages. So this is really a core fundamental um, difference between the two. And a lot of different use cases uh, may or not be uh, possible with one or maybe easier to do with other, uh, depending on what the use case is, whether you need a log or you need something like a proper store. Um, also, uh, Jetstream, as it is built on top of a proper uh, full subject-based addressing, a proper messaging system, um, just through subject-based addressing aware. What it means is that uh, you can address messages within a stream directly by subjects, something that's not possible at all and uh, completely you know, impossible with uh, Kafka, right? It's not meant for that. Um, what that means is that Jetstream enables you not just to do streaming type of functionality, but also uh, others such as the key value store or the object store. And I'll, I'll mention this briefly as well as I go. So uh, one other uh, corollary from this to understand is that subject-based addressing is actually different than topics. There's a lot of confusion on that. Uh, people think uh, because, uh, you know, Kafka says that we do pub sub with topics, that they do proper pub sub with subject based addressing. That's not the case, right? Um, you, with subject based addressing, what the, the implication here is, is that you can capture messages into streams using a subject doc and wildcard, right? Um, the subjects do not need to be created ahead of time. Uh, and compare that to Kafka, sorry, Kafka, uh, which is. Uh, always just one topic per stream. And it's up to the clients to, for example, constantly refresh regularly, go and fetch the leads of topics that uh, have been defined, maybe match them again on regex and start consuming from. This is quite different from uh, be able to define a stream that say capture everything that starts with blah or foo or sensor dot, right? And then uh, be able to address those uh, messages directly when you consume from the stream, as I'll explain. Uh, in Kafka, you typically uh, need to predefine uh, streams uh, and topics, right? Before you can start storing messages. If you don't, 
uh, it gets created with default values, and there's a lot of chance that default values are not fit. For example, uh, the default number of partition is one, and um, that's not very useful in Kafka for many cases. Um, and topic creation can cause repartitioning and redistribution of servers over those partitions, right? When you produce messages, what does this mean uh, concretely, right? Uh, with uh, subject-based addressing, what happens is that uh, the key and or the unique ID uh, of the message is typically naturally included inside the message subject, right? Uh, versus in Kafka, where you publish a topic, it's just a one topic, one stream, right? And you're going to really pass a key, right? Um, and it's just a singular atomic value for a key, right? And that's a separate argument, right? Uh, so what you mean is that uh, in subject-based addressing, first thing is you can, for example, use as many stocking as you need for making up the key. So like a composite key versus just having a single key field, right? Um, and you can also include in the subject names, right? Things that you're going to want to filter on when consuming, right? If you want to do something equivalent to that with Kafka, you have to use Kafka streams. It doesn't, uh, Kafka, uh, base Kafka, right? Uh, can uh, only, uh, you know, seek by sequence number and that's it. It doesn't have multiple subjects or multiple topics within a stream, again. Um, and uh, remember as well that, as we mentioned briefly, uh, Subjects can also in uh, NATs be uh, always be mapped using subject based addressing mapping. Uh, and uh, they can be split and sliced as well if you need to, right? There's a lot of possibilities there. Um, continuing on the same subject based addressing is different topics, right? Uh, so, what this means when you consume messages from a stream, right? As I mentioned briefly, Kafka is replay from offset only, right? Uh, or you have to use Kafka stream to create uh, filtered substreams. So you can say uh, using Kafka streams, uh, deploy an instance of a process that will suck messages from one stream, uh, do the filtering, looking at each message one by one and filter on something, maybe the key or maybe something else, uh, and then create substreams, so other streams to which it, it puts the uh, these messages. So you end up storing the message actually more than once, right? Um, compare that to uh, Jetstream, where can a, a client application can essentially query the stream using subject filters, right? Uh, what that means is that uh, when you uh, create a consumer with a filter, like a query, right? This is passed on to the servers, and the filtering of the messages in the stream according to the subject, right, is done directly uh, by the NAT server, and only the matching records are pushed on to the client application. Compare that to a Kafka stream application or a Kafka client application, uh, you need to receive and process uh, at the application layer, right, the client application layer, all the messages that you can have uh, in the stream, right, and see what they match or not on the subject. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, in Jetstream, uh, there is forms of indexing being used to say that if you need to get a message according to a filtering subject, it doesn't dumbly do a full uh, table scan like uh, over the stream to get our messages. It uses uh, filtering, I mean, so indexing to very quickly know where to find the messages that match the particular subject name. Uh, and remember that filtering is more than just exact match. It's not like a key value store, uh, though it certainly does that, where you can say, give me all the messages that have this particular subject, but you can use the uh, token per token uh, wildcard and the greater than, which is many token wildcards, uh, uh, as part of your filters as well. Um, and finally, uh, filtering can also be combined with just timestamping. So that means that uh, you can say both uh, you know, giving the messages in the stream starting from this particular point of view time uh, and that match this subject filter. Again, base Kafka only gives you the ability to say, give me everything starting from this particular offset, right? From the start, for example. Continue on consuming messages um, just to set the, um, you know, set the, uh, uh, um, the stage here, sorry. Uh, in terms of terminology, right, um, there's a little bit difference that often, um, you know, uh, confuse people between the terminology we use in Jetstream and Kafka. Essentially, uh, what we call consumers, Kafka are consumer groups, right? Uh, and uh, what we called uh, 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 subscribers, 
uh, to a consumer is what Kafka calls a consumer subscriber or a consumer in this case being a client applications, right? Um, the Jetstream consumers, so i.e. consumer groups in Kafka's terminology, are partitionless, right? Um, they automatically distribute messages uh, between the subscribing client applications. Um, this is quite different than Kafka, I'll explain later. Uh, they also are stateful, and the state can be persisted and replicated along with the stream of the data, right? Uh, the JS consumers can specify a subject filter, as I mentioned, uh, so you can see them as like a view on a stream, right? Uh, again, uh, to create something like a view on a topic, a stream in Kafka, you have to use a separate uh, Kafka stream process to do uh, actively that filtering, right? Um, JS consumers have both pull and push uh, delivery mechanisms, while Kafka only supports pull. Um, and uh, JS consumers have both one-to-one -one flow control with the pull consumers and one-to-many flow control, while uh, essentially Kafka only has the uh, one-to-one -one flow control uh, using pool, right? Uh, in uh, Jetstream, uh, you can also, you have more options uh, to where you position your cursor uh, uh, within the stream, right? You can say, give me a message starting from the start, all of them, right? Uh, all the new messages starting from the end, uh, starting for a particular uh, message sequence offset, or the last message, or the last message for each subject, and or from a period of time in specified in the past, right? Kafka only allows you to uh, seek your pointer into the consumer group over the, the, the partition, actually, uh, to start to the end or to a particular offset. There's no ability to say, give me the last hour or give me the last message on this subject, things like that, right? Um, another uh, difference in, in uh, functionality, uh, uh, bear with me, we're trying to go fast. I know we're a little bit late here, uh, but it's talking about exactly one's quality of service. So basically, uh, Core NATs uh, or a typical messaging system provide you at least once. Meaning you may get it once or you may not, right? There's no guarantee depending on a failure scenario. So for example, typically if you're not subscribing at the time the message is published, you don't get the message. Um, with Jetstream and Kafka to some extent, uh, the idea is to provide you a higher quality of service, right? Uh, which is... Uh, exactly once, right? Or uh, at, at least, so, so, so sorry, um, core nuts, by mistake, with his core is uh, at most once. So you get it once only, right? Uh, Jetstream and Kafka give you by default at least once, right? Meaning that uh, it can retransmit or re-deliver messages if they're not being uh, uh, subscribed to at the time of the publication, right? Uh, it can also re-deliver messages uh, and manage acknowledgements at the individual message sequence number level, right? Uh, you have uh, multiple uh, types of acknowledgements, not just simply acknowledge a message uh, or not, right? You can uh, term a message, saying the message is back, don't try to re-deliver it. NAC saying, I cannot process this message, reprocess it later. Or in process, which says, give me more time uh, to process this message before you try to attempt to re-deliver it because you think it's never been processed, right? Um, you can also, when using the NACs, control the timing delivery of the backoff, right? Uh, so you don't simply uh, retransmit the message uh, right away if you get an error on it, right? And you can finally implement some DLQ type functionality with it. Uh, Kafka consumer groups on the other side only support a call, meaning you ask a message, it asks all the messages prior to that. There's no concept of acknowledging individual messages, right? Um, and the application needs to do its seeking itself for redelivery, meaning that if you deliver message, receive message once, and somehow couldn't pre uh, uh, process them, and once them redelivered, it has to seek again uh, to a particular sequence number and offset to know where to go. Um, in terms of the next quality of service, it's exactly once, right? Exactly once has two parts. One first part is the message deduplication. So avoiding an application, publishing a message, uh, and then expecting an acknowledgement back uh, to tell you, okay, the message has been received and has been persisted in the stream, right? Um, and the problem that can happen is that uh, if that acknowledgement is lost or if that client application crashes uh, after sending the Publish request and before receiving the acknowledgement, um, you when it comes back up, it thinks, "Hey, uh, the last message I sent was this one. Uh, let I didn't get an acknowledgement. Let me send it again." 
what it ends up being then is you end up having that message twice uh, in the streams, the message duplication. So it does not uh, uh, fit the exactly one uh, quality of service. Uh, Jetstream and Kafka do it slightly differently. Uh, Jetstream has a built-in message deduplication window over a configurable amount of time, uh, which works across client application sessions. Uh oh, I'm, it has five minutes already, 10 minutes already. Yeah, we, we, we uh, and, over, that's, that, that's okay. I mean, I, I, I certainly learned a lot here and I know that there's a couple more slides to cover. It sounds like it's a topic that we can probably go way yeah. deeper into with partitioning and with storage mechanisms. I can go quickly so over the last few slides if you want. Uh, but essentially, the, the point here is that the uh, if you want proper exactly once message deduplication, on the publishing side, you need to use Kafka Stream. The uh, built-in deduplication feature of Kafka is only per session. So if your application sends a message, crashes before it gets the acknowledgement back, well, it's going to send a message again. You're going to have the duplication. On the uh, receiving side, uh, reliable message consumption, uh, JetStream gives you double acknowledgements. Uh, <laughs> and um, Kafka uh, applications, essentially, you need Kafka streams again. This is a, this is a, this is a uh, I'm gonna go very quickly. Uh, this is a recurring thing, right? Is that you need to uh, uh, use Kafka stream for a lot of features that you have built in in Jetstream. Uh, briefly, the difference between store versus log uh, it allows you to store more than just file memory. Uh, Jet, Jet streams are actually read writes, which means you can use them as queues. Uh, you can delete individual messages safely if you want. You can have encryption request. You can have limits and discard policies. Uh, and the discard policies are much more than what you can do with uh, Kafka, right? Uh, you can even do, as I say, last value cache, discard cache, discard all this. Uh, sorry. Uh, and just I think we've, yeah. we've also prepared a white paper around this that we'll be releasing soon, right? So I think what we can yeah. do here is we'll, we'll, we'll send out all of these slides so folks can look them over. And we'll also send a resource out for the white paper that covers a lot of this content. Um, but yeah, really, really appreciate going over all of these. I know we didn't get to cover all of them because we're a little bit over on time, yeah. but I, I want to make sure that folks can also see um, what Tomash has been uh, cooking up. Right. So we have we have a ton more slides so, here to go over. We'll send them out um, after this event. Uh, Jean Noël, thank you so much for <laughs> for being able to share all. I, of this. I, I want to just go to the last so, slide. It's such then. an elaborate comparison. So do you right. want to get a I high mean, level overview on these last slides? Yeah, I mean, essentially, yeah, there's a lot there. But uh, long story short, if uh, you want to have the, all these features, the functionality that I mentioned, the filtering, using the subject-based addressing in the streams, uh, using messaging as a store, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, mm -hmm. Uh, with Kafka, you have a certain amount of overlap between the Kafka brokers, right? That just give you base Kafka. The zookeepers you have to deploy. Do uh, you have to deploy zoo Kafka streams uh, JVMs? You may, you, if you want to do uh, replication across and mirroring across uh, uh, clusters, you gotta use mirror makers JVMs, right? If you want to have key value store, you're going to use Redis, right? Messaging broker, because maybe you also need a proper pub sub messaging broker. And then if you use messaging broker, uh, such as a RabbitMQ, MQTT, and all that, you're going to need Kafka Connect JVMs. Compare that to essentially NAT server covers not everything, but a, a pretty decent size of functionality that you find in all of these there. If you have add something like Pentos, which is kind of part of our ecosystem, uh, you can even basically do the same equivalent of, uh, that you have with streams. Uh, so compare the number of uh, you know JVMs as far as the eye can see and many nodes everywhere compared to a single binary uh, that runs uh, all of this at once. This is the money shot right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you showed this. So um, yeah, we have a white paper coming up uh, and, and we'll distribute all that out because it's obviously a really um, in-depth comparison. Uh, and and we, we just want to make sure everybody is, um, you know, equipped to kind of make uh, the right decisions here because uh, it's not all, you know, comparing apples to apples. There's a, there's a, a right. lot of Right. I mean, there. if there's one last point I'm going to make is, uh, you know, Kafka is not going to disappear. We're not saying replace all your Kafka with us, right? Mm -hmm. We're just saying consider us and you will huge, uh, have huge savings, huge simplicity, less configuration and more functionality with much less moving parts for a lot of use cases uh we know where you could use a lot more parts into Kafka, right? Uh, don't look at, you know, because you have a hammer in hand, don't look at everything as a nail, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Here with Nats, you really have 
uh, a Swiss army knife, if you want, right? That can cover all those things at once. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Jean-Noël. Um, okay. This is a really cool overview. Um, I'm going to welcome to the stage uh, Tomasz, who has a lot of really cool things to share around um, around uh, WASM and, and how that interacts with Nats. 